CloudDB, shaping your new normal. Welcome everyone to the 2021 APEC Groundbreakers Virtual Tour by Apaco UC. This year our event will be the biggest one ever done with 144 sessions, including normal sessions, workshops and hands-on labs from 100 different speakers over 17 days. Also it will cover sessions in four different languages. Please remember to register to as many sessions as you can. That way you'll be able also to watch the replays to all sessions you have registered to until December 30 this year. I would like to say thanks to our Oracle user groups and Java user groups that made this event possible, and also to our sponsors, Oracle Groundbreakers, and your main sponsor, CloudDB. Now for today's session, why modern and real-time analytics application must use the Oracle database in memory by Rajan Prayadarshi. Please feel free to ask questions at any time to by using the chat window in your right lower corner of your screen and Rajan will be answering all your questions at the end of the session. If any issues within the platform or with the streaming, please let me know by using the chat window and I will then I try to help the best I can. Without Now, without any more further ado, I want to leave you with this amazing session by Rajan. Rajan, the room is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So I'm very excited about being connected with uh, APAC uh, Groundbreaker and doing a talk here. The title of the talk, as you uh, said, is why modern and real-time analytic application must use Oracle database in memory. Uh, if you're listening to this, uh, I welcome you all. Uh, this is the Save Harbor statement from Oracle. So. Uh, on the left hand side is uh, my email and uh, my LinkedIn and uh, Twitter and all. Uh, please do get connected to me. Uh, and if you are working on anything to do with Oracle database in memory, please do um, connect with me and collaborate with me. We are here to help you. And uh, also uh, we can help you on POC, organize uh, further workshops and other things, okay? now. The need for kind of faster processing and database in memory is much more than ever today, okay? I know this was released a few years back, but the need is much more than ever today. And uh, because the, uh, the amount of data and the types of analytics is really exploding. And there are a lot of new opportunities being created um, with data. So please help spread the message. Also take advantage of this technology. Now let's set the background, okay? So digitalization is happening at this point and every forward looking and modern enterprise is looking to update their applications. Data and analytics is at the core of every impactful insights, decisions and innovations. Uh, for digitalization, companies, they need to process large amount of data and run variety of analytics. They also need immediate insights uh, so that they can drive the power of now and also make faster decisions, right? They also need kind of business agility and flexibility to react to the market needs and all. So this is the gist of the presentation uh, in terms of what is the trend and what is the need in the market at this point. And we will talk about how database in memory helps in achieving those goals. So the digitalization has really gave birth to what we, I call the real-time enterprise. And real-time enterprise, as you can see here, has brought customer into focus, okay? And everything is now kind of data-driven, customer experience is the focus, the volume, variety, and velocity of data has increased drastically. And uh, in spite of all of this, um, the decisions need to be made, made much more faster. And there, needs, there is need to have better understanding of customer. The personalization is very important. And understanding of business market conditions and partners and so forth, a lot of different things is becoming more and more important. So 
we talked about kind of modernizing the application, but uh, no better way than uh, to modernize the application than making it much more faster. And because speed can change the way you think about your business. It's about taking the customer experience to the next level and which creates kind of much better customer experience and uh, much better uh, product and service differentiation. It improves the quality of service that you may be offering to your customers. It also helps to create new business models and all. And ultimately there will be happy customers. And speed, as I talked about earlier, it enables the business agility and flexibility. And uh, in order to test new business ideas uh, so that the business can continuously do new innovations and transformations. And uh, like I said, they can kind of al al always strive for new business models and all. And you can't go faster if you're using a slower complex systems and architecture because that slows down your innovation and slows down time to market and, you, and the business can lose the competitive edge and all. So in the process of business transformation, many of the enterprises, they are using different types of analytics. Um, uh, for example, retailers, right? They're using location-based analytics uh, to uh, send coupons to customers, or they analyze the what customer is browsing on the site and kind of immediately take some actions uh, to help the customers. As well as manufacturing, they can monitor the quality and adjust parameters. The fintech uh, companies, they can do fraud detection and other things. So the, the kind of list goes on. Many of the companies are doing the just-in-time analytics, okay? Uh, which uh, requires much, much faster and real-time analytics. So now we talked about what's the need and trend. Let's uh, see what's happening with the legacy applications which are built uh, with uh, slower uh, systems and architectures and so forth, right? So what's happening with the, when you have the slower analytics, it can impact the overall business, okay? Uh, the daily batch jobs of reports are running slower. Uh, the batch windows, they miss SLAs and that can impact the overall day uh, of the business. Um, then the critical uh, BI uh, reports like Cognos, Tableau, MicroStrategy, uh, those will be running slower. Executives will be waiting for reports uh, partners and suppliers are waiting for reports. I'm sure you must have felt it when you were working uh, with the older applications and all. And if you have built a new application based on like, let's say location-based analytics, it is starting to miss SLAs and all. And detection of fraud takes hours instead of kind of seconds. And also the daily, monthly, and quarterly reports, uh, they lag behind competition by hours. And this is all gonna uh, not help in being the leader in the market. So there is a cost for all these delayed analytics, okay? It leads to poor services, it leads to customer dissatisfaction, and the business will be slower to um, react to market needs and slower to competition and so forth, right? So there is a cost to uh, having slower analytics. So the problems, what are the problems with legacy and traditional solutions? They don't take advantage of the latest and cutting edge uh, uh, innovations uh, from hardware and software point of view. They use point solutions and kind of make the architecture very complex. Um, they need integration, they need new skills, it does not scale and so forth, right? So there are a lot of challenges with the legacy and traditional solutions. Uh, they need movement and copying of data they cannot optimize the ad hoc queries. So a lot of challenges with the legacy and traditional solutions. So now the question is, we talked about uh, we, all the problems with the legacy solutions. We understand what are the needs for uh, the business going forward. So how will enterprise application meet their goals? So as we know from the, at least from hardware trends, right? A lot of evolution is happening. A lot of innovations is happening. There is a larger, cheaper memory. Um, and uh, uh, then we have uh, the larger CPU caches, the larger multi-core processes, and uh, larger SIMD vector processing. There's a lot of technology involved here, but the, the key point is that uh, there are a lot of advancements being happening from the hardware point of view, which is making things run faster. And the key is to that to find that solution, which is going to take advantage of all these uh, uh, new trends and new innovations. 
So what are the performance needs or speed uh, needs for the modern applications, right? So on the left-hand side, hey, um, if you are taking advantage of the, some of the new applications, it should be easy to implement with no application changes, right? Who wants to kind of redo the application to take advantage of some new technology, right? And then, of course, there, there should be power and performance, uh, which is uh, providing the real-time performance and uh, scalability, right? So if you want to scale the business uh, and so you should rely on a system that's scalable, plus uh, kind of flexibility in terms of there are a lot of different and new types of data types in the market to be able to process any sort of data and also all the data in, in means, meaning uh, data deciding on transaction system to data warehouses, uh, to external sources, object stores and whatnot, right? To be able to process all sorts of data and all the data um, in, and also, but still meet the SLAs. And finally, it should be have the self service and automation, right? I mean, it needs to be business analyst friendly as well because nobody wants to write a kind of code to in order to get some of these things working, right? So um, a lot of automation and all, and um, also minimize the DBA involvement in some of these things so that uh, it makes it much more powerful when there is a lot of automation built in. So, Kind of question is again, hey, is there a leading edge technology that can help meet your performance and scalability goals? And that is where let's talk about database in memory at this point. So, uh, so now we're gonna talk about introduce database in memory, and uh, then we were gonna talk about capability and innovations built in database in memory, and and kind of focus on how database in memory solves the the needs of the modern application and digitalization and all. So basically, uh, in Oracle, uh, especially, uh, a lot of data, they exist in row format. And the row format is great for kind of transactions data, but they are slower for analytics. Now, uh, you can put the data in columnar format. It will be great for analytics, but slower for transactions. So the now question is, is there a solution that uh, helps uh, things run faster, both for transactions and analytics? So this is where the innovation for database in memory came in, whereby we are able to store the both the row store data and column store data simultaneously in uh, Oracle database, okay? Here the row store is stored uh, as usual on the disk or in the buffer store and all, whereas the column store is stored in the memory, okay? It's only uh, it's, exist on the memory. And the key point is that this is transactionally consistent, okay? The data between the column store and the row store, they are transactionally consistent. Now, what does the customer get, okay? They get the faster transactions because the data in the row store, uh, in all the transactions can work on the data in the row store, whereas the analytics will also be faster because they can work on the data in the column store, okay? And again, like I pointed out, there is no change in uh, needed for any of the BI or third party applications. Um, everything works under the cover and transparently. So the key benefits of database in memory uh, is um, faster analytics on transaction data. Uh, so we'll talk about some use cases here whereby data is stored on the transaction system and somebody wants to run quick reports or business wants to run quick reports and all, they can directly do it on transaction data. Faster with data warehouses, uh, if you want to kind of uh, make some uh, critical application run faster or, or, or all of the data warehouse run faster, uh, you can use database in memory for that purposes. Then increases capacity. Uh, because you are able to run things faster, it increases the capacity on your existing system. Uh, better biz business decision. Uh, this is an insightful one where we, because you are working on a large set of data, you don't limit the size of data that you work on. Uh, you, can, you can produce better business decisions. It also lowers TCO because uh, yeah, you don't need additional reporting systems and all uh, in order to make things run faster. And I'll show you more examples later. And also it minimizes the cost duplica uh, data duplication, reduces cost and complexity and all, because again, you don't have to copy the data. So business benefits, all the things that we talked about that are needed for 
uh, modernization and uh, and digitalization kind of faster time to value agility uh, simplicity better business decisions lower tco and these are kind of all the benefits that are needed for building a modern application so it's not that just we are talking about it. Uh, even the analysts start talking about that um, the uh, powerful, how powerful these uh, tech, this technology is. So uh, this is a slightly older report, but uh, Forrester never came out with an updated report. But uh, you can see here Oracle uh, technology database in memory is in the right hand corner uh, as the leader in the market. And similarly, in-memory databases, again, Oracle is the leader uh, on the right-hand corner, right? So uh, again, uh, in, uh, Forrester never came out with updated report, but at the time that they, that they, they did the evaluation, they rated Oracle the highest at that point. Now, uh, we know that uh, internally that uh, hey, uh, the largest and the biggest uh, companies um, are using uh, is the database in memory okay these are the largest um, electronic manufacturer largest automakers largest food companies largest banks in india largest bank in europe and so forth but i just want to let you know that it's not that the largest and biggest only needs database in memory um, any businesses that needs uh, faster uh, applications um, they will benefit from database in memory the reason, um, I mean, all these fastest are the uh, biggest and so forth, right? They have used database in memory because they want to maintain the lead in the market. They want to adopt new and cutting technologies faster. They are focused on improving their customer experience. So again, if they are doing it, why not every business in the market should take advantage of this technology? So where is database in memory available? It's an option for Oracle Database Enterprise Edition. And it's almost available in uh, several types of deployments, whether it's a DBCS uh, with extreme performance edition uh, on Exadata Cloud Services, Exadata Clouded Customer, um, Autonomous Data Warehouse or ADW, it's available with flash only. And on-premises it's available as an option and so forth right so it's available in various deployment options so now that we talked about kind of brief overview of database in memory now uh, question is where can you use database in memory so uh, so database in memory um, actually uh, helps to improve performance of kind of basically three kind of operations and these are the three operations basically used for any sort of analytics uh, this is scan this is join and this is aggregation, okay? Um, and you know, I'm sure you figure out if you have run queries and all that these are the basically three operations that are done, okay? Uh, in order to run any sort of query or analytics. And this is where database in memory focuses on or helps in improving the performance. So where to use database in memory? Like I mentioned earlier on the OLTP systems, and this is all the transaction systems, um, the enterprise OLTP systems, uh, those running packaged ERP, CRM, HCM, Siebel, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards, and so forth, right? All those uh, uh, transaction systems, uh, uh, business can run uh, analytics directly on those systems uh, in order to get quick uh, uh, reports on other things, right? And uh, also there is no need to kind of extract the data out of these OLTP system to another uh, operational data store uh, or, uh, or any other place in order to run analytics. You can run directly analytics on the OLTP system. This is the beauty of database in memory being deployed on the OLTP system. Now, uh, in many cases, you may have to extract the data of many OLTP system and put into the data warehouse, right? And this is a different kind of use case whereby uh, there are a lot of summary reports uh, and KPIs and dashboards uh, being built in the in the data warehouse. Okay, and uh, a lot of business they run uh, different types of uh, reports on uh, looking at those KPIs and uh, and dashboard queries. Okay, so again, uh, database in memory can reside on the those data warehouses um, uh, and speed up. Uh, certain applications or overall data warehouse as well. 
So here is a kind of example, and this will help you understand. So let's say on the left-hand side, you can see there are enterprise applications. And, uh, and once you have data in the enterprise applications, uh, then they get pulled out from and they through the data integration layer, the data goes to enterprise data warehouse. And, uh, and uh, then uh, department data marts are being deployed and so forth, right? Or in some cases, they replicate the data from those enterprise applications to operational data store and then run some uh, uh, queries on these operational data store. So this is kind of legacy or traditional way of doing analytics. And what we say is that uh, this increases the time to insight because, uh, because you have to kind of pull the data off from these enterprise applications to operational data store, or you have to pull the data from data warehouse to data marts and so forth. And, um, again, based on these innovations, we say, hey, you don't need these department data marts, you don't need these operational data store, and you can basically simplify the architecture, reduce the cost, reduce time to insight by directly deploying database in memory on those um, enterprise uh, application systems or transaction systems or directly on the data warehouse systems, right? And so you can see that the, the previous architecture diagram was much more complex than uh, the, this diagram where you have uh, database in memory, memory directly running on these transaction system and data warehouse. So overall, again, the benefit is hey, it reduces the data duplication cost, reduces the data management cost, uh, uh, security risk, time to insight, and so forth, right? So a lot of benefits using database in memory in the architecture. So kind of summarize here, hey, uh, uh, there's traditional way of doing things and traditional way of doing things requires ETL, manage separate system storage, indexes, materialized views, all of this may be needed to improve the performance. This is a legacy way of doing things. And uh, also it causes a uh, slower time to insight, higher cost and complexity. And, uh, and with the complexity, you may lag in the market and slow to innovate and all. And then there is a modern and optimal way and simpler way of doing things using database in memory. It looks much simpler. And uh, again, it's simpler to implement. Uh, it's 100x times faster performance you can get. And uh, this will help the business uh, uh, in terms of going faster to market or faster to innovate. So now that we talked about all the business benefits, right? You must be excited to learn about hey, uh, what are the capabilities and innovations uh, built in here, right? So I briefly touch upon that. So again, this is a reminder that what are the performance needs for modern applications and all. So I mapped them back to what are the capabilities, uh, those two capabilities of database in memory, uh, right? So simplicity. So uh, it's uh, I'll show you how it easy is easy to implement, simple to implement no application changes and there are a lot of algorithms and things built in which helps in achieving faster and real-time performance okay um, i won't be able to go in depth here uh, but i can show some glimpse of things um, again there are a lot of details available feel free to set up time with me uh, or uh, connect with me and uh, we can go through the details okay um, then uh, also uh, like i said database in memory works on variety of data uh, one key capability is the scale out capability. So you can, it's not that you're limited to running it on a single node as such. Uh, you can scale the capability using rack as well as sharding. Okay. And uh, database in memory also works with um, the active data guard. So uh, on the extra data system. So you can use the uh, a database in memory to on the active data guard to kind of uh, do a lot of creative things there and offload some of the processing. There is also fault tol tolerance built in here. So there is also high availability element in the database in memory. And a lot of autonomous capabilities also built in here. So let's start with the simplicity aspect. So how do you turn on uh, database in memory? So here we are showing how it is simple to implement. Okay, so basically you have to configure uh, the in-memory size, uh, which is a parameter as something greater than 100 MB, and, and then you can turn it on. And after that, you have to just say alter table, certain table name in memory, and then uh, those uh, tables will be loaded in the memory, okay? 
uh, you can load certain partitions, you can load uh, selective columns, um, you can uh, also load materialized views and columns of selected columns of materialized views and all and so forth. So there are a lot of different options here to play with. Uh, there is no need to load the full table. There is no need to load the full part, uh, full uh, materialized views. You can selectively pick and choose which columns you need. Uh, you, one again, another key advantage is that you can drop analytic indexes. Okay, then I will emphasize it's only analytic indexes that we are talking about, not the OLTP indexes. Okay, so you can drop those analytic indexes uh, if uh, if you are able to get the performance from uh, the database in memory. So. Uh, one thing we always hear about that, hey, I don't have enough memory on the system. So I'll talk about two different functionalities that are available that can help you increase memory on the system. Um, and this is again uh, uh, based on the different system configuration and architecture. So let's talk about Exadata first. Um, and on Exadata, uh, in comes the, the flash built in. Uh, which is uh, around terabytes and terabytes, which can be used to uh, uh, use for the database in memory. So database in memory does work on the flash. And uh, again, it helps uh, to improve the performance on the Exadata system. Um, similarly, uh, persistent memory, uh, this is for commodity hardware only. Um, persistent memory is a new silicon technology from Intel and uh, it reads at memory speed much faster than flash but slower than dram okay so but i mean uh, of course it's available um with uh, certain architectures and also you can use persistent memory so you basically you have to remove some of the dims uh, from the system and uh, reload using uh, the persistent memory which are much fatter and uh, higher amount of memory okay and uh, we have seen in certain POCs and all that uh, using persistent memory can give up to 10x faster performance uh, on the systems. Now, the next one is SIMD vector processing. This is very, very powerful. Uh, this uh, is uh, based on the Intel chips, uh, which has uh, uh, power to do SIMD processing or SIMD uh, single instruction multiple data processing. Uh, in a one shot, you can process up to 512 data points, okay? Um, and very, very key to database in memory. And, uh, and many of the performance benefits comes directly from the SIMD vector processing. And it's also very, very innovative. And we are trying to use it in multiple different uh, cases, not only for uh, filtering data, but also for joins and other things. Uh, similarly, uh, like joining and combining data can be done much faster. And so here the technology used is the Bloom filter technology, whereby you take the uh, kind of few um, data points uh, from the, uh, the smaller table or dimension table and use it to during the scan of the larger table. So basically you convert the join in terms of a, a, a a scan operation and the scans run much faster with database in memory. The next one is aggregation. Uh, again, this also is built on the same foundational principle that the scans runs much faster. So using the dimension tables, uh, you build an outline for aggregation and uh, while doing the scan for the large table, you continue to fill up those um, aggregation outline. So um, again, a lot of innovative algorithms built with database in memory, which helps to uh, make it run much, much faster. So now that we talked about all the powerful things, one other key thing is that even though you may run the DML on the tables um, and so forth, uh, you can still use database in memory. So what happens is that for the, if you run the DML on the row store tables, right? Uh, some of the tables that are changed, uh, they will be marked invalid. And uh, when the scans are happening on those uh, tables, um, then all the other rows will be processed uh, using in-memory scan, while this row, which has been invalidated, uh, the system can go and pick up the row from row store. So uh, again, uh, the, the point here is that the database in-memory 
provides the real time analytics no matter how much dml and other thing that may be happening this again allows you to run mixed workload on your transaction systems uh, scalability as i talked about is another key thing uh, you can scale out uh, across the servers wherever rack is uh, involved and uh, and uh, you can have in memory uh, it deployed on all these different servers okay and uh, only thing is that you have to take care of that you have uh, you must have a dop greater than or equal to number of column stores so some things to take care of but uh, yes it, you can scale out to any size also database in memory is fault tolerant so you can actually uh, uh, copy these uh, in memory column stores to another server so that if this uh, node uh, ser an order server goes down you can actually run uh, still run the queries or get the same performance uh, by accessing the data from the other nodes uh, on the system in memory on active data guard uh, this uh, is a very uh, uh, important capability whereby uh, you can actually put the uh, column stores very creatively on the uh, the primary system as well as the active data guard or standby system okay you can put one table uh, on uh, the on the primary system and uh, the other tables on the uh, active data guard or you could put different partitions of the same table or uh, like newer partitions on primary system and older partitions on the standby system a lot of different ways uh, you can creatively handle um, this active data guard. Again, this is available with Exadata only. Um, the other thing is about access and being able to process the data from all different sources, right? So um, here uh, you have, uh, you can actually access the data uh, from the remote sources like object storage uh, and files and Hadoop, and you can bring it into the memory and uh, once it is in memory, the processing becomes much, much faster, okay? And we have seen in internally it's kind of 100x faster by bringing the data from these external sources into the in-memory column stores. Um, it also in database in memory helps in uh, converged analytics whereby you can run different or variety of analytics um, in memory, like the JSON processing. So in uh, for JSON type of data, you can store um, either uh, partial JSON or the full JSON uh, in, the, uh, in the column store, which will help to accelerate the processing of JSON data. Um, very similarly for text columns, some of these inverted text indexes can be stored in, in memory which helps to uh, kind of improve the performance of text types of analytics. And finally, the spatial kind of or geospatial um, analytics, uh, some of these bounding boxes and spatial, which is called the spatial summary, can be stored in these uh, memory. And this helps to kind of uh, improve the processing of spatial type of queries. So uh, the last one, probably the database in memory, the automation and autonomous capabilities are built in. Uh, so we talked about all these different capabilities, but is there a smart button, right? And uh, so here, uh, there are different levels of capabilities in different releases. Um, 18C uh, onwards, it uh, allows user to just uh, mark the table as in memory. And when the memory pressure kicks in, when the kind of a column store gets filled, then uh, the system takes over and it uh, starts to uh, offload some of the cold data from the memory and whereas pulls in the hot data into the memory. Okay, so, uh, but 18C user needs to mark table as in memory. Whereas 21C onwards, there is no need to even declare tables as in memory. So we are definitely working on this vision of making things autonomous. And, uh, and making the system much more smarter and intelligent. So um, uh, again, this is, it will help uh, our kind of key business users to run a system much more faster without getting into the nitty gritty details of in memory. And we are working on this uh, continuous journey of innovation and a lot of innovation has done gone over the years. 
and uh, from starting from 12.1 to a 21c lots of innovation i didn't uh, get chance to talk about all of them today but uh, feel free to connect with me or there are a lot of blogs and uh, uh, other materials available which you can read uh, whereby uh, we, you can see all the innovations and all these innovations help in kind of giving, giving faster performance to the system so now the question is what can customer expect right i talked about my faster performance and all and what have customers seen over the years so this is a slide which talks about uh, the customer benefits and these are all publicly available stories you can uh, kind of browse through on the oracle site to find out these stories and many of these customers have seen up to 100x performance benefits using in memory and some others have also seen 3x 4x so kind of uh, uh, the performance does vary based on the different workloads and data you're working on but uh, uh, again for different types of queries and workloads uh, many customers have seen uh, a, a great performance benefits for their applications so now question is who is using and what are the use cases and all. So some of the things I already talked about, so there are a lot of biggest banks and uh, enterprises as well as uh, medium to small size enterprises also have been using it. It's all depends upon the criticality of the um, all the application, right? If the application is critical, uh, you should be used, able to use database in memory for your help. Um, now, uh, this is kind of a summary that we have seen. It. So uh, database in memory is industry agnostic and it's, uh, it can be used across all different industries, okay? Uh, the, here the list is only a subset, okay? Um, and uh, um, we have seen uh, customers using all across different industries for uh, running financial systems, we're doing monthly, quarterly, and annual and financial reports. Uh, providing services, running operations, maintenance services, supply chain, uh, running CRMs, uh, customer 360, customer experience, modernization and all. So the key point here is that wherever there is a need or the time is of essence or, um, or, uh, or the, there are performance needs and uh, modernization needs, scale matters, uh, all those places database in memory has been very helpful to our customers. This is a kind of a, a list of uh, stories uh, uh, that uh, I have in, as part of the deck. I may not get a chance to uh, run through all of them, but um, these are real customer stories. They are all publicly available, and uh, you can uh, feel free to read again on the Oracle site. Um, and uh, let me quickly browse through some of them. So this is kind of a, uh, a story from Lufthansa, so whereby they are able to speed up their daily operational maintenance and services using database in memory. Basically all the aircrafts are kind of undone after a certain time. And then, then there is a tracking of parts, location, status, usability, and all those things is done using database in memory. And database in memory help to reduce run times by eight to 10 X. Uh, my toys is another example. Um, they wanted to track what's on stock um, and outgoing goods and the incoming goods and packages and so forth. So basically the retail customer trying to manage their inventory stock and other things. And uh, again, their performance gains is 3X to 10X. Uh, Bosch is another beautiful example whereby uh, they had a lot of problems with uh, having lots of indexes on their systems. And uh, by using database in memory, they were able to drop those indexes and uh, thereby improving the performance significantly for not only uh, the analytic queries, but also for OLTP workloads as well. Uh, Hisense is a, a customer uh, electronic manufacturer and uh, they had a lot of their, their data volume was increasing and they needed a faster processing and all. And uh, again, the database in memory was able to improve, uh, drastically remove the elapsed time and other things, um, as well as improve productivity by 50%. Steph uh, is another uh, example. Uh, they do the temperature sensitive logistics, uh, basically a transportation company. They needed a faster analytic decision making 
and uh, basically the managers at Steph they were demanding more and faster decision making and uh, from orders to billing it used to take weeks to get the data and reports and now they are able to get uh, in much more real time so very very helpful for Steph. So there are a lot of industry use cases uh, across uh, again like I said industry I didn't list all the industry here uh, but uh, uh, it can be used across the industry as well as there are a lot of horizontal use cases wherever the customer is putting customer at the center is part of the whole modernization spirit of modernization so uh, wherever the customer insights uh, customer 360 and all they're all database in memory can be used so now that we talked about all the capabilities and you know, success stories and all the question is how can you get started so basically, in order to get started, um, try getting some of these documents like a uh, quick start guide, read through it, how you can get started. Uh, one key tool here, uh, which will be beneficial is in-memory advisor. So learn about the in-memory advisor. You can run this tool to identify which workload uh, can benefit. And then also play with uh, in-memory in Oracle Live Labs. Um, this will be very helpful to learn about the technology. Finally, we have a base level capability uh, feature. Uh, uh, basically, uh, um, uh, customers are uh, licensed to use up to 16 GB of memory for free um, on their systems. So once you are successful in this discovery and trial phase, you can deploy a certain application in production and then expand to many different types of applications. So this is the advisor tool I talked about. Uh, very, very important or handy tool in order to get started. And base level feature, uh, again, like I said, customers can use up to 16 GB column store uh, uh, free. Um, and uh, uh, many customers have used to uh, get started on the journey. So these are the different resources. Uh, yeah, on the right hand side, again, uh, 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 our email IDs. Okay, and a lot of different people from product management and engineering. And a lot of there are a lot of different sources available. Uh, feel free to browse through them. So now, kind of key takeaways, right? So uh, database in memory uh, again will be your best best investment for running modern and real time analytics at blazing speed. Uh, this does enable real time analytics, accelerate analytics queries by orders of magnitude. It's not like we're talking about 5%, 10%, we're talking about 5x, 10x improvement. It reduces the complexity and total cost of ownership. It enables significant performance boost both on the exadata systems as well as commodity hardwares. It's easy to implement with no application changes and easy to get started. Uh, customer can now use to uh, use up to 16 GB, the base um, column stores without having to license it. Uh, this is the base level license that I talked about. It's available on both on-premises and cloud. So that's the key takeaway. If you don't remember anything, at least remember these key takeaways, okay? But again, the, the point is get in touch with us. Um, if you need any help, if you are running any POC, if you have any questions, please get in touch with us. Again, these are our email IDs, so get in touch with us. Back to you, Alvarez. Uh, up to this point is no questions showing. Please feel free to contact Rajan um, basically on uh, offline and he will be, will be uh, answering all your questions. At screen you can see the emails and also you can find him also in Twitter with his Twitter handle. But our emails are now on the screen and you can basically contact Rajan uh, or anyone, or any person of his team too, if you have any questions regarding Rajan presentation. Rajan, it was a fantastic uh, presentation with a lot of very interesting content. I know the community, not only Asia Pacific, but everyone from around the world that's also watching this and watching the replays, we will enjoy it a lot. And thank you so much for taking your time in your evening in the United States to present and share your knowledge with us. It looks okay. like there's no questions coming. In that case, thank you so much, Rajan. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. Yeah, again, I'm very excited about connected with this um, and presenting here. So thank you so much for the opportunity. 
Thank you, Rajan. And we are always here to support you and your team in the best way we can. And saying that, uh, uh, please take care and be safe. Uh, you, Rajan, and everyone that listening to this presentation and and look after yourself and your family in this pandemic times. And please have a wonderful evening, morning or afternoon, whatever you are around the world. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. CloudDB, shaping your new normal.